This program is sponsored by Bet's Gold Coin. Join us for family-friendly dining. Hello again and welcome to Women Leaders of Mariposa. Today our guest is a gal who is um, a wearer of many hats and an incredible leader, holds a, an incredible leading position here in Mariposa County as the Human Services Director. Today with us we have Siobhan Kateri. Thanks for having me, Carol. Thank you for joining me. Yeah. So Siobhan, your many hats, my gosh, as Director of all of Mariposa County of Human Services, you, I, I understand that you have so many different things that you are actually in charge of, different categories, and can you explain to us what it is? Sure, um, the Human Services Department in our community uh, serves a wide range of people. We have programs under our umbrella such as behavioral health and recovery services. So some people know that better as mental health services. Right. We also have social services which includes things like child welfare, uh, protecting children and their safety, adult protective services, in-home support services. We also provide cash aid and assistance and administer Medi-Cal benefits, so it, uh, health insurance for people. Mm -hmm. So just a lot of different functions that our, our agency serves. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, it's interesting in small counties, and, and this is uh, probably really well known to anyone who works in a small county, but you have to wear a lot of hats because your population's not huge, but you still have to provide the same services and quality services to your community as larger counties do. Mm -hmm. And so we have a great team, and we serve a lot of people in the community, and I'm really proud of what we do. So. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, now, what, you, what led you to this? Yeah, what, what led me yeah, to human what services. What led you to this? Yeah, so in college, I actually interestingly thought I was going to launch a career in journalism. Oh, gosh. But um, quickly realized that I wanted to work with people more. So I studied psychology, and then I got my graduate degree in social work. Mm -hmm. And so pretty much have spent my whole career working in either mental health. I used to be a crisis worker for four years in mental health when I lived in Oregon. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to Mariposa. Um, actually, I, I followed my husband here. He works for Yosemite National Park. And when I first came into Mariposa, I looked around and I thought, what am I going to do? There's no, there going to be no jobs for me here. But, but it was nice, even though I spent my first couple years here working in Tulare County and doing a, a commute. I actually was able to get a job with Mountain Crisis Services as their executive director in 2001 and spent a lot of time there until I had my son. I spent about uh, 10 years with the agency in different capacities, um, took a break when I had my son for a little while and then about a year and a half ago when the human services director position opened I thought I'll give it a try. I wasn't sure if I'd get it but I'm really happy I did. Boy, there's a there's a grand new place out there that you have to work in, isn't there? It is. Yeah, yeah. it's a it's a really nice environment. It's right. it's comfortable not only for our staff but for the community and the clients that we serve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's been nice to house all of the different services in there, hasn't it? It makes a huge difference. You know, part of what makes us successful is our ability to communicate. Generally, the families that we work with not only are struggling with one issue but may have a variety of things they need help with, and so housing all of our team together and making sure right. that we communicate with one another I think is, is really important to the work that we do. Makes it much more convenient. Absolutely. Right, right. Yeah. So you have a son. I do. Wonderful I do. thing. He's an eight and a half year old third grader and he's wonderful. He loves sports, very mm -hmm. active and very bright and all mm -hmm. kids are very bright but I'm partial I guess. <laughs> yeah. Of course you are mom. Yeah. <laughs> and then you were saying that your husband works in the park? He does. He's an archaeologist. He works oh, uh, in the park and and he loves it. He feels like a big kid in a playground. He often says if they've I shouldn't say this probably on the air, but if they find out how much fun I'm having, then oh. I'm going to have to pay to do my job <laughs> instead of them paying me. But he, he loves his work. That's so. excellent. Mm -hmm. 
So um, as far as education, what would you suggest for someone who wishes to go into your field? Yeah. You know, I think that for my field, I loved getting a social work degree. Mm -hmm. I feel like social work is one of those areas that really uh, lays a good foundation for you to be able to do lots of different things. And there's social workers in hospitals, there's social workers in schools, there's social workers in child welfare. And so I think that is one direction that I'll you know, often talk to people about. Um, I, yeah, I think the other thing that's really, and this isn't just in my field, but in general, is advice that I like to give people when they're searching for what career is good for them is to take a chance to ask, to yeah. push your comfort zone. I think too many people, they start a job and they feel like they can't really get off of that path. Uh, I'm all about happiness and when it's no fun anymore, you need to really be searching for something else. And I'm all about fit too. If you're not in the right job for you and it's not a good fit, then it's just, it's not good for you and it's not good for anybody else. Mm -hmm. And so I really uh, talk to people who are starting their careers about taking time to explore, to do internships, to ask questions. You'll never, you'll never know unless you ask for opportunities. Right. And I think putting yourself out there and leaning into that is really important. Right. Yeah. So actually, in essence, it's do what you love. Do what you love. It's yeah. important. Yeah. yeah. It's a huge mes message, I know. Yeah. That's what I always told my kids, do what you love. Yeah. And so they all started their own business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Became their own boss. Learned from mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's also nice to work for a corporation. It's also nice to work with human services. Yeah. Um, there's so much in our community that needs done. Absolutely. I know housing is a huge issue around here. What can you tell us about it is. anything that's being done in that area? Yeah, absolutely. So. The um, Board of Supervisors asked the Human Services Department last year to get involved in developing a strategic plan around homelessness. You know, one of the things that we've really learned through studying this a little bit more is affordable housing is a huge challenge, right. not only in our community, but in other small rural communities, yeah. our neighboring communities. So really looking at affordable and secure housing that, that people, you know, working people can afford to live mm -hmm. in. And that's one of the goals that we have in our homelessness task force is, is making housing that's affordable for folks. And I know, I know that can be a challenge in small communities, but I think it's one that we're up, we're up for the task. It's not a human services goal alone. I think it's a community goal and, and we're just mm -hmm. one of the partners in that. Well, in your position, I know it requires a lot of you, but there must be some fun times that you have in it, too. Are there any fun meetings that you get to go to? Or fun meetings fun that meetings? I get to go any to. Any fun meetings? Can a meeting be fun? <laughs> yeah, I, I actually love meetings. Um, yeah. I know that for a lot of people, it, it sounds very painful to sit through meetings. Uh -huh. I have many, many meetings sure. every day. But I, you know, I get a lot of energy from other people's ideas, from bringing different perspectives to the table. I think when we can have differing viewpoints and, and agree to have a really good debate on things, we come up with better solutions. Right. And I think by bringing diverse groups to the table in these meetings to look at issues of homelessness and housing and, and poverty, I think those those are the kind of meetings where we really make some progress. So and you're so talking like community involvement. Community and, yeah. involvement. Oh, yeah. is huge and, yes. and part of what I've really loved about the homeless task force is we have you know reached out and asked uh, business owners and other community members to get involved and we're getting voices at the table that I don't think have historically been involved mm -hmm. in developing human services and it's been really enriching the perspectives we have at the table and when we're looking at solutions, we can find solutions that work for everybody. Right. And that's really important because the last thing we want to do is develop a program or develop a strategy, bring it out to the community late in the game and find out that the community really doesn't want that mm. or really doesn't think it's going to be good. So right. I'm, I'm excited about the process. I really want to encourage other people to get involved, to lend their voice to the process. It mm. makes for a much better community uh, strategy. Oh, certainly it does. Yeah. Certainly it does. Well, there must be something fun happening. There's something fun here that we were given some information on Absolutely. that just sort of ties in with yeah. what you do and community involvement. Absolutely. So, you know, I one way community members can certainly get involved is 
through participating in committees or meetings. They can right. always call and ask, you know, based on their interests, what they could do. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of events that go on in the community as well. Uh, Mountain Crisis Center, for instance, is having their clothesline project during the month of October to right. shine the light on domestic violence awareness. And the clothesline project has been a project that's gone on in communities across the nation uh -huh. for many, many years. But community members can come and they can design t-shirts that tell their story of victimization or they can um, tell stories of friends or family members or loved oh, ones who have been victimized. Special. And and the t-shirts hang throughout the community throughout the month of October. Mm -hmm. And we did it when I was at Mountain Crisis and they've continued to do um, the clothesline project. My building will actually be one of the host sites oh, for nice. some of the t-shirts. And every Wednesday afternoon throughout October, folks can go to the Mountain Crisis Services office and um, from 3 to 4.30 they can design their t-shirts which w could be part of that clothesline project. So that's one way to get involved. Another way is CASA's having a great fundraiser oh, yeah. on October 3rd. I'm and going. Yeah, I'm going, <laughs> I'm going. too, so I'll fun. see you there. But it'll be, it's a fun way to support court-appointed special advocates. And we mm -hmm. work as a human services department very closely with CASA. Um, we're working towards the mutual goal of keeping kids safe and, and keeping them in homes that are, that are safe for them. And so um, I would encourage people to support CASA as well. There's a lot of great things going on in the community and ways people can get involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Super. Yeah. So um, what words of wisdom do you have for us or a special quote? Anything yeah. that's close to your heart? I, I do have a special quote that I try to live by, and um, it's a quote by Mahatma Gandhi, and wow. it's, be the change you want to see in the world. And right. I truly believe that we can spend time complaining about things, but we're really, unless we get involved in the solutions, unless we yeah. lean in and put our best selves oh, yeah. forward to helping find solutions, um, we shouldn't be complaining. Um, and I. I try to live my life by that. When I start to feel upset about something or feel like something's not going the right way, I ask myself, you know, what role do I have in that and what role do I have in changing that? And so I would encourage, you know, people to kind of think about that. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, everyone, Siobhan, thank you for joining us. Yeah. It's been wonderful. And now we know a lot more about Human Services Director. Yeah, thanks for having me, Carol. <laughs> All right. Okay. And thank you, everyone, for joining us on Women Leaders of Mariposa. We'll see you again soon.